Hello again, Algebra students. In our last lesson, we were solving inequalities using addition and subtraction. Today, we're going to use multiplication and division, which isn't a huge change from what we've done with equations. But there is a little bit of something extra that we need to remind you about. <clears throat> I know there's a lot on the screen right now, so don't worry about everything right there. But when we have an inequality like this, we know that negative 6 is less than 8. If I multiply both sides by 2, so I'm going to multiply by 2 over here, multiply by 2 over here, I get negative 12 and 16, and that negative 12 is still smaller than positive 16. <clears throat> and the same is true if I flip this around. I've got 6 is greater than negative 8. Dividing by a positive number, dividing by 2, I would get <clears throat> positive 3 right here and negative 4 right here. And that inequality is still the same. 3 is bigger than negative 4. So if we multiply or divide by a negative number, nothing special happens. Okay? There are some, I mean, there's other stuff on here that you can read. The one thing that I do want to make sure that you notice is that I used as example problems just a greater than or just a less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, same whole system with that, it won't matter at all that way. However, if I have the exact same problem now, so negative 6 is less than 8. We agree with that, that's true. I'm going to multiply over here by negative 2 and by negative 2. When I do that, I'm going to get the 12 on the left and negative 16 on the right. But 12 is not less than negative 16. When I multiply by a negative, it actually flips our inequality sign. And you're going to find the same thing is going to happen with division. So we know that 6 is greater than a negative, 8, any positive number is bigger than a negative number. If I divide by negative 2 in this case on both sides, I'm going to get negative 3 on the left, positive 4 on the right. And those signs flip. Just thinking about how big the numbers are. It's because of where you are in the number line and multiplying or dividing by a negative number is going to flip you to the other part of the number line. <clears throat> and again, that same thing holds true for greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. I'm hoping that you remember this from seventh grade because that is something that you learn. But if you multiply or divide by a negative number, it's going to flip your inequality sign. So we have several problems here. You may want to jot these down in your notes as I'm going through them or pause and try to do them and then check your work with mine. In number one, I have 6x is less than negative 30. I don't want 6x. I just want x. I have to divide by 6 and divide by 6. And then some people are going to think about what I just did on that last slide and think that my sign is going to flip, but it doesn't. This is going to stay as a less than because the 6, the thing that I divided by, was positive. That doesn't change anything. Now, I've already mentioned that you do not need an enormous number line like this. A couple of numbers is good enough. Here's my negative 5, negative 6 over here, negative 4 on that side. This would be an open circle because it's not equal. It's just a less than. And then we're going to shade over here to the left. Again, this is pointing to the left, and so is that. For number two, I don't want 16f. I just want f. So I would have to divide both by both sides by 16. And no negatives that I'm dividing by, so that's all good. 48 divided by 16 is 3. I'm going to keep my sign. The problem is I want my f first. We already talked about that in the last lesson. If I put the F first and still compare it to the 3, notice how the alligator is trying to eat the F. I want the alligator still trying to eat the F. <clears throat> so 3 is my important number. So I would have like 2, 3, and 4. <coughs> Excuse me. This would be a filled in circle because this is equal. And because it's a greater than, it's pointing to the right, I'm going to shade to the right.
Number three, I know you guys are gonna love this because fractions are your friends, but I don't want three sevenths F. I just want the F to be by itself. And right now we're multiplying by a fraction. We don't divide by fractions though, we multiply by the reciprocal. And really the three sevenths is the part that I'm worried about. So I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal of that, which is seven over three. When I do that, again, the threes go away, the f's go away, or the sevens go away. There's my f, that's what I wanted. Over here, this is actually pretty nice too because the sevens are gonna go away. The three can be divided by three and the six can be divided by three. So really on the top, I have a two, on the bottom, I just have a one and it's a negative from my original number. And again, I want the f first. So the alligator's eating the f. Negative two is my important number. So negative three, negative two, negative one, filled in circle, and we're going that way. In number four, this is the first one where we're gonna divide by a negative number. If I divide both sides, and I haven't been drawing this vertical line, but you certainly can. If I divide by negative four, there's my M. Negative 16 divided by negative four is positive four. But instead of a greater than or equal to, it's gonna to have to flip and be a less than or equal to. So the graphing part now shouldn't be a big deal. Three, four, five. Four is my important number and it's equal. So we're gonna fill in that circle and we're going to the left. In number five, it looks like two fractions. But remember, the fraction bar that I have right here, that's actually just a division. That's just saying x divided by negative six. And we know how to get rid of dividing. We're gonna multiply. So we'll multiply by a negative six, or you can even make it a negative six over one if that helps. So the negative six and the negative six cancel. That's what I wanted, there's my x. However, I multiplied by a negative, so I have to flip that sign. And then let's clean this up. Feel free to grab your calculator if you want to, but I know that a positive times a negative is gonna be a negative, and I can divide both of those by three. So my answer is just gonna be negative two. <clears throat> this is gonna be an open circle because it's not equal. And we're going left. In number six, <clears throat> I need to get the y by itself. Right now it's being multiplied by a fraction. And I don't, I don't divide by fractions when I multiply by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal happens to be a negative number. So I know that's gonna flip for me. So I'm gonna have a negative four over one is my reciprocal, which is really just a negative four if you want to. You can make it over one if you want. But at least that all takes out that. So there's my y. Multiplied by a negative, I have to flip my sign. And negative four times one is negative four. But again, I don't wanna graph this the way it looks right now. I want the y to be first. If I do that, if I put the y first, the alligator's trying to eat the negative four, there's my inequality. Here's my big concern. Really, we flipped our sign twice. One time was just because of the multiplying. One time was because we wanted to switch this y to be first. So it really flipped the whole thing around. Some people are gonna look at this and say, well, this was a less than or equal to, and now it's a less than or equal to. And nothing happened to that sign. But we know it really did flip twice. So I have negative four as my important number and it should be a filled in circle. And I'm not gonna be able to go all the way down to the end of the line that I've got here because of all my other work that's over it, but that's what that would look like. In number seven, I have negative four X. I don't want that, I just want X, so I'd have to divide by four, by negative four, really. Problem is that the other side has a fraction. And I don't want a fraction divided by a whole number. So I'm actually gonna look at this 
almost like a fraction also, negative four over one. If I would multiply by the reciprocal, which would be a negative one over four, that works out nicely over here. Ignore that problem number seven right there. Negative one fourth being multiplied by that, and that got kind of messy, I'm sorry, but that goes away. There's your x. We're going to flip the sign because I multiplied by a negative. Negative one fourth times negative two thirds is going to be positive. I can do some simplifying here. So on the top, all I have is a one. On the bottom, I've got two times three, which is six. And again, feel free to use your calculator if you'd like. When I put the x first, see how the alligator's eating the one sixth. So here is x, alligator's eating the one sixth. And again, it looks like my sign didn't flip at all, but it really flipped twice. You have two choices on this. In the last, the last lesson, I said I like to go with like zero and one and try to get an approximation for where one sixth would be. That's fine if you're drawing your own graph. If you have one that's made like this, you can certainly go with zero and then one sixth and then two sixths, which is really one third. And then three six, which is really a half. So you could count by six if, if you wanted to. This is going to be an open circle. And we're going to the left because it's less than. All right, one more of these regular ones. I have to get rid of multiplying by negative four fifths. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is going to be a negative five over four. And I would like that negative 2 to look like a fraction. So over here, all that stuff is gone. That's what I wanted. I multiplied by a negative, so I have to flip my sign. Negative times a negative is a positive. And I can do a little bit of cleanup here. So I'm going to get positive 5 over 2, which some of you might be more comfortable writing as 2.5 or 2.5. That would be fine. So you have an option, again, with the number line. If you want to go two and then three and then find two and a half, if you want to count by halves and have two and then two and a half and then three, however you're counting, as long as it looks consistent in your number line, that's fine. I'm going to do this one differently than I did the last one. So I'll go with two and then here's three. So two and a half would be right here, but I do have to label it. It's going to be a filled in circle and we're going to the left. Here's the last problem. We've got a story problem here. There are at most 36 red and blue marbles in a bag. Apparently that's far too many for someone to just count them. Uh, the number of red marbles is twice the number of blue marbles. Write and solve an inequality that represents the greatest number of blue marbles in the bag. So I'm saying we want to use B for the blue marbles. Couple of things to talk about. <clears throat> at most means it can be 36, but not more than that. So I really have my red marbles plus my blue marbles is less than or equal to 36. It can't go over 36. Now, I don't really want that red in there. I know that the blue is going to be a B. I know that's going to be less than or equal to 36. We'll change that plus to a blue plus now. The red marbles, it says, the red marble, the number of red marbles is twice the number of blue marbles. That would be two times B. If it helps you to sneak a one in front of that B, go right ahead because now I have two B plus one B is three B is less than or equal to 36. Divide by three. And I get that B is less than or equal to 12. So if I wanted to know how many blue marbles are in the bag, the greatest number of blue marbles, I could have up to 12, but not any more than that. Because then if I would double that, I would have 24 reds. That gives me a total of 36, and I know I can't go over that. Today's practice problems are going to be worksheet 2.3. Make sure that you are showing your work in your notebook. Make sure that you are extra careful with the signs because there's so many negatives and you have to flip your inequality signs a whole bunch. Take your formative quiz in Schoology when you're all done and if you need any help, let me know.